Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to talk about one of the most useful intermediate Git skills, which is stashing. Once you know adding and committing and branching, stashing is a really good tool to add into your repertoire. Now if you want to learn more about Git and GitHub, uh, there's a coupon to my Git and GitHub course in the description, or check out some of my free YouTube videos on Git and GitHub. Okay, here we go. So imagine with me for a moment that I'm working on some important project, I'm on the main or master branch, whatever you want to call it, and I make a new branch. I switch over to it, it's called Puppy, and I start working away. But I'm not done with a feature, I'm halfway done with this Puppy stuff, whatever it is, but I need to switch back to main or master for whatever reason, somebody needs help over there. So I haven't made any new commits with my work on Puppy. What happens to that work when I switch back to the main branch? Well, it depends. Sometimes those changes will come with me, and you may have seen that before. But other times, Git won't let me switch at all. It's going to tell me, hey, you can't do that unless you make a commit or you stash your changes. So let me show you what that looks like. Here I've got a very simple project. I have this file, pretend it's full of code. It says my halfway done feature, I'm not quite ready to commit yet. If I look at my git status, I have some changes I've made, but like I said, I'm not ready to commit. But my coworker calls me over or pings me on Slack or something and says, hey, can you check out what I just merged into main? So I'm gonna switch to the main branch. I'm currently on the feet one, feature one branch. I'm gonna do a git switch main, but I can't. Error, your local changes to the following files would be overwritten by checkout. Please commit your changes or stash them before you switch. So I've already said, I'm not ready to commit. I don't wanna have this weird halfway done commit. So let's talk about stashing. We can use git stash to stash away changes, to hide them away in the corners of git uh, so that I can then return to them later if I want to without having to make unnecessary commits. So the command we'll use is git stash. You can also use git stash save, it's just a little longer. And this will take all of your uncommitted changes, staged and unstaged, and it stashes them away, reverting those changes in your working copy. So let me show you that here. I wanna to switch to the main branch, it won't let me. Well, let's just do a git stash. You'll see this file changed. All those changes that I had, uncommitted, unstaged changes, gone. They've been stashed away, so they're not removed forever, but they're stashed away. And it says, saved your working directory in index state, work in progress on this branch, feature one. And it gives me this hash, add feature one. And now I can switch to main, get switch main, do whatever I need to over here. Here's my coworker's new code that she wants me to look at. Great, let's say I'm happy with it, it looks great. Now I'm ready to go back to my feet one branch, and I want those changes that I stashed away. I'm ready to keep working. How do I get those changes? I use git stash pop. At least this is one option. This will remove the most recently stashed change or changes and reapply it to my working copy. So git stash pop, just like that. And look at those changes added back in. It's like magic. I never committed anything, but I still was able to retrieve those changes. I'll quickly run through some other details around stashing. Uh, there's a command called git stash apply that allows you to take whatever changes are in the stash and have them applied without removing anything from the stash. So this means you could apply changes to multiple branches. A common gotcha with stashing is that if you have untracked files, AKA any files that you have never told Git about, you've never checked them into Git, they won't be included in the stash. But if you use dash u, git stash dash u, they will be. And I don't do this often, but you can stash multiple times as much as you want. I'm sure there's a limit, but you can keep adding to the stash using git stash. And each time you do that, you get your own little checkpoint in the stash. They are added, they're stashed in the order that you added them. You can view all of those stashes using git stash list. And then you can take one of these numbers, these little identifiers, and you can apply one of those specific stashes to whatever branch you're on. Git stash apply stash at two would apply whatever is in or whatever changes uh, are stored here. You can also drop stashes. I never do that. And you can clear the stash with git stash clear. So there's a lot to it, but honestly, it all comes down to, in my daily use, git stash, and then later on, when I want changes back, git stash pop. That's pretty much it for me. I hope you learned something. Uh, check out my other git videos. I'm sure I'll link to some of them here. Uh, and check out the git course in the description. Like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.